Kita, and I'm running for Lusu, the, uh, the president of the Tifun uh, Lusu Council. So just a little bit of introduction about myself. I'm the current vice president, sorry, the 34th Lusu Exco. Uh, I was oh, formerly the president of the political association. I've been involved in various organizations. So just before entering NUS, I've been doing a lot of different kinds of things since I was probably 13. I was involved in the grassroots, I was active in school. So this marks the 10th year of my so-called active uh, student leadership experience. I started out when I was a young boy in, in Chinese high. My hair is still the same, um, just that now I got slightly rounder. Uh, but certain things never change, and that is my interest in organizing events, a broad range of events, ranging from sporting activities. Although I, I don't look that sporty, but actually every year I organize uh, my Hong Kong's uh, past versus present competition for you know the alumni and existing students. I was furiously in concert band. I, I led a concert band in primary school. You can't, you, you, you don't expect me to be a musician. So I used to play the euphonium, so that was in primary school. And I also led um, former organizations, students' union in the Chinese side, and, and I started a lot of groups uh, also in, in the community, as well as in, at, at the national level. So I was involved with the National Youth Council. Um, I was a pioneer bet of um, people running the Young Change Makers Fund. Uh, last year, we, I was involved with the National Family Council, I introduced this project, Super Blue Grant. We have 200k and we saw a lot of new initiatives, uh, you know, pro-family initiatives from the ground. So there is a broad, broad range of different kinds of activities that I have been involved in. So student, you know, involvement in student organizations in different platforms uh, is nothing new to me. So why I chose to run for NUSU president is because I hope to contribute this rich set of experience this extensive network that I've built across the years to NUSU and to contribute and support all our different constituent clubs, our NUSU committees, associate bodies, as well as the ordinary students in NUS. The reason why I really want to run arises from a Facebook conversation with one of our NUSU volunteers. He is Mr. Wu Cheng Liang. He was one of the former NUSU committee chairperson. He was in charge of Students Fund. So he told me this, the role of the next Musu president is not just about organizing events, it's not, it's not just about you know, pushing through policy changes and all that. It is about inspiring a whole new generation of Musu leaders that will take this organization forward. Inspiring the next generation of Musu leaders to make sure that this organization continues to move ahead with times and to stay relevant to our students. And that is what I want to do. That NUSU is no longer a mediocre organization. That NUSU, as the Students' Union of not any ordinary university, but as the top university in Asia, we ought to be different. We ought to be the forerunner, the pioneer, and the trendsetter in doing things. And that is what I hope and I set out to do. So our goals. This year I introduced the three Cs. A closer NUSU, a creative NUSU, and a caring NUSU. And some of our fundamental values, when you see how a closer, closer NUSU and a creative NUSU interacts with one another, we hope to be an inspiring organization, inspire people to join us, join <coughs> their students. We want to be an inclusive organization as we bring people closer together, as we care for our students. Most importantly, we want to be, as, as we bring together a creative and caring NUSU, we want to be an innovative and forward-looking organization. So at the nexus of it all, so what sums up the NUS experience, I would say it is about creating opportunities, it is about opening possibilities. So this is how our proposed EXCO would look like. Usually you see it's you know, very top-down, very hierarchical, but right here, it's a network organization. Everyone is pretty much equal, it's very collegial. Everyone plays an important role. What is new here is 
the Organization Development Cell with a vice, Deputy Vice President and a Director of Relations. There will be people looking at horizon scanning and looking at future trends and how NUSU can continue to stay relevant and keep ahead with times. So now I'll share more about how we can forge a closer NUSU. Last year, this was me, Eda the Builder. The tagline was Building Bridges, Realizing Dreams. So I think we, we, we did pretty much that. I saw how the closer council uh, became clo closer together. We actively involved the council. There were a lot of funding activities. We went bowling, we went on SLC or crux. But I feel more, much more can be done. So we did Love Anywhere. So it was the first time that we did a joint union initiative that involved, you know, not only all, uh, this is the first time, you know, apart from Black and Fact, we bring everyone together to do something. So Love NUS was a simple initiative. It turned out pretty decent, and I think we can do more. But from the experience of organizing Love NUS, I think, you know, the interaction and the cohesion that we hope to build should not just be restricted within the council level. It has to be, you know, an organization-wide kind of thing. I call this the donut effect of what we are doing right now. We have all our clubs, uh, our local communities, as well as our associate bodies. We have been actively trying hard to engage the general NUS student population. But what is missing is that little ring in there. We often forgot to engage our own active NUS volunteer, NUSU volunteers. So which I feel it's a pity. It's something that we can improve on and we can make a lot, a whole lot of difference. And what we want to do is, of course, to engage, starting from the inner core, the active group of NUSU volunteers right here. So what we are going to introduce, it's a monthly tea, uh, union tea session. My hobby is always drinking tea. If you have seen my Facebook post. What this serves to do is to reduce information asymmetry. There are a lot of constituent clubs, our committees, and ad hoc groups that are doing a lot of good things. Very interesting projects and ideas and initiatives that have been rolled out. But the problem is, even our most active NUSU volunteers don't even know about it. Which is a great pity because our NUSU volunteers are the ones that will always go out there to spread good word about these events and initiatives. We have to call on all these people to really join people and join, join in whenever, whenever they have the time. So what this session hopes to do is to reduce such information asymmetry. We'll invite representatives from different constituent clubs, our associate bodies, our NUSU committees, our EXCO, and even we will open it up to the entire student population. Each time we do this, we send out an EDM bus, and this is an open call for invitation to join us in this union tea session. What we hope to do is one, update them on the upcoming initiatives and events that are coming up uh, you know, for the month ahead. They can you know, share some of the activities that they are organizing, volunteering opportunities. The second thing that we want to do is providing a platform for networking and bonding through food. Most people will be attracted by food, myself included, will have you know, reborn and chill over food. And, and I think that sort of interaction what we want. And most importantly, this is a platform to get involved. This is a channel, this is an entry point where normal students out there will step forward to join us in our useful activities that are, that are organized by our clubs, committees, associate bodies, and basically everybody. So that is engaging our inner core. We start from there. Then we want to bring everyone closer together. I think we want to be as inclusive as possible, we have to take an open door approach. So we hope that our constituent clubs will be willing to open up your events, to invite participations from other faculty clubs, you know, normal, you know, people from different backgrounds to join you. I think that source of fusion, that source of mixing and synergy will help to build a more exciting and vibrant NUS. So reaching out to the masses, if you take a look, take a copy from the, of the Rich magazine, we realize that a lot of the uh, pages are filled with opinion uh, op-ed pieces. <coughs> I think uh, as a union and campus publication, there could be certain tweaking done to feature more on student life 
and profile all our constituent clubs, our associate bodies and committees. So what we could do is to have pre-event pre publicity for the events organized by our clubs. That could be post-event feature story. And what we really want to see are our volunteers who have been spending so much effort, who took time off to volunteer. We want to feature them, what they do behind the scenes. And that will help to build a sense of appreciation People will get to recognize not only the events that are organized by our clubs, but also the faces behind the people who organize them. So this is how we'll continue to reach out to the masses, not just through the physical hard copy, but also studentry, which is the online version. I think there's a lot of potential for us to shape a network union. This is just an example of what I think it's a very possible and feasible plan. There are a lot of talents in CAC. There are multiple, there are 12 subgroups, uh, sub, uh, sub clubs, and a lot of very interesting um, performing groups. There are CSU who is doing a lot of good work out there in terms of uh, community outreach, regular volunteering for programs. There are students' funds which run, uh, you know, provide book grants and book awards for needy students. How we can bring different how we can align different uh, of our you know, clubs and committees to a common goal. I think there's a lot of potential that we have not explored. And this is what we want to do, a network union. And the point for NUSU is to bring all these groups together. So what they can do could be something like a charity concert right at Newtown, Pound Green, where CAC provide the performing arts, arts groups. The CAC could you know, bring in some beneficiaries to, you know, enjoy the performances, we raise funds for student fund and contribute to needy students. This is just a simple example of the potential if all of our clubs come together. And this is what we seek out to realize this term. In terms of collective power, if we come together, I think we can reap a lot of benefits. For example, one would be the securing uh, you know, bulk discounts for our freshman social camps. We reckon that now, you know, all our camps are reaching three-digit figures. So if affordability is a concern, people will be missing out on the FOP experience, which is crucial to be finding their time in the NUS. So, NUSU at our level, we will leverage on our collective power, we will secure bulk discounts for our freshman social camps, we will identify areas for cost savings, and as far as possible, contribute to, to keeping all these camps affordable so more people can be involved and be engaged. Secondly, we want to strengthen our central marketing committee. We want to pull different resources together. This will function on an opt-in basis. Different clubs, your marketing directors will come together and we share our different resources, our networks and our contacts. Eventually, we will expand and grow the pie and everyone benefits more. So instead of functioning in silos, if we bring everyone together, synergize the benefits are multiple. So I always like to talk about this analogy of a high level network cohesive fighting force. And there, there what you see here is an aircraft carrier battle group. Our constituent clubs, our communities are just like the ships in this carrier battle group. If you function independently, if you are just a normal cruiser, you are vulnerable to submarine attacks. There are no destroyers to protect you. If you are just an, a bear, NUSU Expo is just like the mothership, the aircraft carrier. Without the different constituent clubs and communities, you are vulnerable, existing alone. So if all of us can come together as a network integrated force, then I think the potential of us is, 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 is really formidable. So this is the type of union that we ought to forge. Not that we want to fight against the administration or anything, but really, we want to do good collectively. Next, I'll come to the point of a caring NUSU. So what does it mean to be a caring NUSU? Of course, we'll continue to strengthen our existing welfare initiatives. This year, the Welfare Cell has did a good job of increasing the welfare pack to 10,000 you know, in, in, in during our term in the 34th Exco. We are committed to increasing this uh, by another 
for those of you uh, from the different clubs, we have handed you a copy of the deliverables that the people who have signed it have pledged and are committed to implementing. So this is one of the key initiatives that we are committed to do. We will continue to look at improving the quality of food and wellness. I think for uh, law school, you know, the, the, the contract of, of the, the vendor is expiring. We are looking at options to bring uh, Subway or Starbucks to law school. So these are things that we will continue to look at and be involved in. We will continue to partner you know, our constituent clubs to conduct our welfare surveys because constituent clubs do their best. They are our most immediate touch points with, with the students. So we'll continue to run all these welfare surveys. We'll continue to work closely with OED on transport and infrastructure matters beyond just ISP. But now there are a lot of flooding incidents. It's not a once in a 50 year event, but now it happens quite regularly. And I think there are, there are a lot of areas for improvement. And we'll continue to work with OED on that. So, JOE, there are many ordinary Joes in NUS. There are, whatever we do now, our outreach, I would say we don't reach more than half of the NUS population. But these are the three basic lowest common denominator that we have outlined that would touch the hearts of all NUS students. I will go into detail what we can do in these areas. In terms of education, we pay lots of money for quality education. NUSU needs to ensure that. My honours classes are, you know, we have about 30 over people. If we benchmark ourselves, if you look at Princeton Review and all that, you'll realise that public colleges in America, their class sizes are about 12 to 15. So actually, our class sizes here are about twice of that. So in terms of quality of teaching, you know, I think we have been compromised. This is one key area that we can continually look at. And MOE is going to in increase the number of undergraduate enrollment in, uh, in, in, across our universities. So chances are class sizes will not go down, but will increase instead. So as those who I think we need to continue early advocate for quality education and will continue to do a survey to look at the class sizes across the board and how we can work towards having smaller class size. Having said that, there are numerous trade-offs. We want students to be involved in thinking about these trade-offs. Who is going to pay for the faculty and the increased faculty staff? Is it going to be MOE, the students, or the university administration? So of course, we don't want the students to pay for, for, this, for, for this thing that we deserve. So we'll try to work out alternative solutions. So that sums up Nusu's role as advocate for quality education. In terms of jobs, I think right now, we are, I would say, lacking behind um, NTU, SMU, and perhaps even SUTD. Of course, business school have a wonderful career centre, but there's disparity across the board, and I think we could do more. We want to plug in the gaps of the good work that has been done by OAR, Office of Alumni Relations, which organises a lot of mentorship programmes. We want to plug in the gaps of uh, those good efforts that have been done by Career Centre. We have met up with both of them, um, Ms. Corinne Ong from the Director of Career Centre. We've also met up with um, Situ from the Office of Alumni Relations. So we sort of the conflict that we realised we, we, we identify a niche area where NUSU can come in. That is, to organise high frequency, small scale, industry networking events. For example, if someone is interested in, in you know, the life of a consultant, what a consultant does in a day. So we are going to invite consultants down to a small scale networking session, we have quality interaction. Even if you don't secure internships and, and jobs in the future, at least you, you narrow down your career, uh, you know, what, what kind of career you want to do because with you, you have increased exposure to the industry knowledge. And these, we hope to partner together with our constituent clubs to organize, happening on your venues and facilities. Um, NUSU will connect you with all these other industry partners we want to bring in. So far we have not uh, worked with the Chambers of Commerce, the American Chamber, which I've been uh, in contact with. They are also actively, uh, they have a lot of opportunities that can be offered. So we want to bring in organizations like the Chambers of Commerce with lots of industry groups to come in to 
provide more opportunities, job opportunities for our NUS students. And finally, NUSU as the enabler. There's no one size fits all thing that appeals to all students in NUS. You might like to dance, I might like to eat, someone else might like something else. So what we can do is really to provide enabling conditions for NUS students to pursue their dreams. And that is for us to launch the NUSU Opportunities Fund. The idea of this fund is to see ground up initiatives that are organized by our constituent clubs, by our associate bodies, our NUSU committees, and even ad hoc groups. Of course, as our constituent clubs, we will hold priority. And how this would function will empower the NUSU Finance Standing Committee to be the grant makers to appraise these project proposals and decide which are the uh, events and projects and initiatives to fund. I will talk in detail about the Opportunities Fund and how it works later. So, in sum, for the ordinary Joe in NUS, NUSU's role is to be the advocate, the connector, and the enabler. And we want to increase opportunities, job opportunities, quality education, and beyond the curriculum, opportunities. Now I'll come to the part on a creative NUSU. I think many past uh, presentations in, in the past few years, I, I don't think many people uh, for, for the presidential candidate, I don't think anyone looked at the term creative. So I think this would, would be a first. The number one thing to do is redefining Rack and Flag. Rack and Flag is a rite of passage for NUS students. This is the you know, I think performance by the club. And um, next year, we're adhere to what the 34th Council has decided. We'll take REC out of NUS. And to do that, we need a lot of support from all, all participating bodies. At the same time, we'll secure commitment from the NUS senior administration. President Dan Tor is firmly very supportive of Rack and Flag. So it is time that we make them and NUS officers to co-pay for Rack and Flag. And that will help to defray the cost for all our participating bodies. We, the fundamental principles behind Rack and Flag, I think, I'll propose that we have freedom of participation. It's always on an open basis. Of course, we hope as many people participate as possible. It will be freedom of ideas and freedom of spending. I think the whole idea of Rack and Flag <coughs> is really about doing your best and put up the best performance that your club or, or participating body is able to put up. So that is for Rack and Flag. One thing I hope to change is the scarcity mindset. A lot of times as students, especially in student organizations, we always restrict our own potential. There are a lot of good ideas, but we often queue them off because we think of possible financial constraints, we think of possible manpower constraints, which I feel is a huge pity that these ideas are not seen into fruition. So what we want to do is to grow the pie through forging new, sustainable, long-term partnerships with organizations like the National Youth Council. So on 22nd August, I met up with the director of NYC. We were discussing what, kind, what can we do in NUS. So what we want to do is, there is, I think if I'm not wrong, $72 million of uh, National Youth Fund that has been set aside by government. We have, uh, there's still a lot more to be used. So what I proposed was actually to do sort of like a, a, a grant scheme that we can start and run by any by, by NUSU. And that will help to fund and start from up initiatives. So this is in the pipeline. Next week I'll be meeting again with NYC to firm up uh, greater details. And we hope to roll it out in the coming months ahead. The money will be, I've also spoken to Vice Provost of Student Life, Professor Tan Tai Yong. The money will be, you know, probably Pro Provost Office or something, and then the ground makers will be Muslim council members like ourselves. You have the ability to decide the projects to be funded, etc. So hopefully with more sources of grant schemes, more money, you know, we'll be able to do away with that resource constraint. In terms of manpower, earlier I set out in forging a closer Muslim, the union key sessions will provide the platforms and opportunities for people for you to recruit more volunteers for your events. So manpower constraints, we also want to do away with it. Hopefully, throughout this term, we want to change people's 
discuss it with myself. And that is one great thing that I really hope to achieve. I always believe that feedback must never enter a black hole. It is not just about collating all this feedback from students, organizing focus group discussions and all that, but we must do something about it. It does not mean that we just forward this feedback to the different offices and wait for things to be done. We cannot take a passive approach. We need to translate ideas into action. Shuttle buses are a perennial bugbear. Now you have flooding. These are all very annoying things. So what we want to do is to address all this, to take it one level higher, not just soliciting feedback, but translating good ideas, good, good solutions into action. I always believe we are a community of talents. There are a lot of bright, talented individuals with good ideas, good knowledge, good solutions. So we want to crowdsource for solutions to all these problems. We will launch a Change NUS challenge. This idea is gotten from challenge.gov in America, where uh, city, federal governments, they actually you know, list out problems in, in the municipal governments for citizens to solve, and you reward people with prizes. So we'll function on a similar approach. We want to invite students, computing, spread computing engineering students to involve in co-creating solutions. We'll put up, price, if, we'll put up price, prizes for people who come up with good ideas. If, given to, if left by chance, nobody's going to do anything, even if they have a great idea. But if you incentivize them, they will, they will share their ideas with you. And that is what we hope to do. We want to work in partnership with OED, especially, to, to, to fund and start such uh, prizes. So it's, instead of just you know, relying on OED to solve problems, we proactively solve these problems at the student's level. I think in Tambusu College, they, they, uh, from what I heard from former president Lee Khan. So they actually run a lot of such, um, they, they have their problems with the transport system. They actually you know, invite students to come up with very creative solutions. So really, the ideas are all out there. It's about putting it together and making it happen. And this is what we hope to do with feedback in NUS. We want to also cut red tape. And where we can cut red tape are these three key areas, finances, logistics, and resources. Finances, we've spoken to Computing Club. They raised a very good, good uh, idea, and you know, especially Desmond, who, who mentioned that, you know, why, why must students pay up front money to organize uh, events? We all know as event organizers, sometimes all the claims and reimbursements takes up to, take, takes up to months before we are reimbursed. And sometimes you have to purchase large quantity items or very expensive items. And the petty cash flow is just that little. So are we only expecting rich people to be able to organize events? What does it mean for student vibrancy in NUS? So what we want to do is to work closely with OFS to try to introduce solutions, provide cash and advancements, uh, maybe increase the petty cash flow available so hopefully this will ease the burden and constraints on our NUS students, especially our organizers. A big problem is the accrual system and, and the budget cycles that NUS run. So if, if you happen to have an event, you know, close to the end of one particular budget cycle, you have to do a lot of approval to the next one. So this was a, this was a perennial problem that we faced in the 34th Council by the former Law Club representative Ken. And this is something that we want to pursue and identify solutions, and financial reforms is what we are committed to doing. When we spoke to Engine Club, they raised a very good problem, uh, which, is we, which is that we only have one Musu band, and there are so many people wanting to use that band. So must we always rely on that one, one band and have that scarcity mindset? I think we can change things. And I'm sure out of 27,000 people in NUS, there are more than one, one people who own a band. So what we want to do is to provide a union-wide reserve pool. Go do sort of like a you know, feedback session to ask all our, our Nusu, active NUSU volunteers who have you know, resources like pickup trucks, lorries, vans that they can use. And this is a very good suggestion that has been made by NG Club during our meeting with them. And this will definitely, when pulled together, 
provide alternatives to our Musu band and support all our constituent clubs during the FOCC period. NG Club also mentioned a very good problem, which is that there are a lot of resources available, but they don't know that Musu can provide them. So now we'll introduce Ask Musu as an initiative. Come to Nusu for any problem. If you need something, contact the director of resources, uh, of logistics, of, of services. So that is what we want to do. Ask Nusu. And in terms of resources, we want to, of course, this is a, another big problem faced by clubs like CAC, like sports. So I want, I think, especially during our FOCC period, this applies to all our constituent clubs as well. So we want to create a centralized booking system. What we want to do is to surface this during the student life meeting, chaired by uh, Vice Provost Tan Tayong, and we'll come up with this system and we get the buy-in from the vice deans of student life. Hopefully we can, you know, ease and cut all these red tapes such that there is less bureaucracy for everyone to deal with. So red tapes are what is hampering all this student vibrancy in NUS. We want to improve efficiency and this is what we are committed to pushing that will benefit all our constituent clubs. Next, we, NUSU is currently headquartered at YIH. U-Town is now the new bus area, but there is no NUSU presence, uh, except that it has been nominally you know, represented by USC and our associate bodies. So now we want to launch the NUSU Center. I've spoken to Vice Provost Tan Tayong. He said, that this place could be, you know, driven and used by Nusu. We'll use it as a hot desking place where people from different groups come together to brainstorm ideas and to run project meetings that benefits the community, that benefits the university. In addition to that, we'll have mentorship from professors like Albert Thiel and Tan Lai Yong from Madsen to, to sort of provide additional support to the good things that our students want to do. So this NUSU Center provides small platforms and opportunities that we want to roll out. It's a new program, it does not belong to any faculty, but this is a place where students, student groups, you can tap on to do your things. This, is, this could also be the hub where people, our committees, our clubs, and associate bodies could jointly plan events together. And so I present to you the NUSU Center that we want to launch. This will be launched by Prime Minister in October. So all these things, cutting red tape, changing the scarcity mindset, translating ideas into action, providing a hotbed of ideas and action. What we really want to do is to change mindsets of our people here. It's about inspiring a can-do spirit in all our Musu volunteers, as well as all our NUS students. We cannot stand for mediocrity. We need to do beyond what we are doing. So let a hundred flowers bloom, like I always said. As, as I said during FIC. We must trim the banyan tree that, that hides away, that, that prevents the sunlight from reaching our flowers. Those are things like the red tapes, the lack of resources, the financial and manpower constraints. So trim the banyan tree. And then we'll provide good fertilizers that will help our flowers grow and bloom. And hopefully there'll be rain Rain more, rain, more rain that is provided by the administration. The rain water and resource support will definitely help us in creating a vibrant garden in any ways. So sowing seeds for the future. <laughs> That's me and what I intend to do. <coughs> we want to address long-term challenges, things that are coming out in the horizon. There are a lot of problems and a lot of game changers. So as I said, Nusu cannot afford to stay in stasis. That is the role of the DVP and the Director of Relations, important things that they need to do. So right now, these are some key challenges. There are increasing number of students going on overseas programs, SEP, NOC, you read the Straits Times report, they say almost 80% of our students are going overseas. So does that mean that only 20% we can draw our leadership from? I don't think so. So right now, we also face a manpower and talent crunch. We often face succession crisis. Don't know who to hand over to. So we need to create solutions. The first one that we came up with was the UNT sessions that provides multiple entry points every month 
where people can come in to volunteers. That will help to augment and expand the pool of people that can contribute to our MUSU activities. So that is one, creating multiple entry points to be a MUSU volunteer. Secondly, we want to have fluidity of movement throughout MUSU. If one person is always doing logistics for the whole life because he's just very good at uh, managing the inventory or like me, like to shop and buy things, then that person will be stuck doing logistics for probably the next few years of his life. Or if someone is good at administering claims, very efficient and, and very meticulous, chances are he or she will be doing financial stuff for the rest of his life, his or her life. So we want to have fluidity of uh, movement throughout Nusu. People exposed to different roles, building both depth and breadth in terms of experience, and most importantly, continuity. We need to build not just one or two successes, but nurturing an expanded pool of future junior leadership. They can come from anywhere. The next Nusu president may not come from Nusu Exco. They could come from constituent clubs. They could come from our Nusu committees. So we want to have flexibility and fluidity throughout the whole organization. People with different kinds of backgrounds coming in together, complement each other, and run this union together. So this is sustaining the union, and this is what the vice president candidate will be talking about later, a NUSU volunteer movement and the overall manpower plan. So of course, we need to not just get ideas from our own people, we must not restrict ourselves the things that happen in Singapore. For the past few nights, I've been going sleepless. I've been looking at different university websites, the student unions, what they do. I think there are a lot of good ideas out there that we can tap on. So what we propose is a visit to the American and Korean university student unions. We want to draw from the best of the East and West. In Korea, in America, John and Sherman who have went to America for exchange and uh, study the old summer programs, they have forged and touch base with MIT, Harvard, and all that. I've been to Korea. John is also very active in Korea with lots of pretty girls. Um, so, so these are where we want to go to touch base and forge relationships with, draw their good ideas, outsource them, bring them back and implement, and apply them to our Singapore landscape here in the US. This is what we'll do. We are, we are starting early. We hope to go in December. We want to open it up to all council members so everyone can join us on this trip. The contacts have been made, with, and we also want to visit Yo because there's now Yo and US College. We want to identify where we can collaborate and learn from each other. So later, John and Sherman will share with you all greater details. They'll share in greater detail. So this is John and I planting a tree. What we are doing is not for the short term. And this is a Chinese quote that says, Qian ren zhong chu, ho ren cheng liang. Some of the initiatives that we have introduced might seem a bit idealistic, might not seem feasible now, but these are the things that need to be done. So it is about investing in the future. It is about doing the right things that will make this union stay relevant in the long term. So we may not enjoy this, the, the shades of this little tabusu tree right here, although they are taller than the both of us, but I think you know, 10, 20 years later, when we come back to NUS, we know we have made the right choice and the right decision. This is what we want to do. And one more thing. We, want, we ran Love NUS this year, and we want to do a new campaign. It's called Thanks NUS. We have set a date, 10 October, we have laid out the plans. We are going to give apples to people who matter. We want to show gratitude, especially to the cleaners who help to clean up our LTs or seminar rooms. We want to show gratitude to the bus drivers who, who run our ISB transport system. We want to show gratitude to all these unsung heroes. A world-class university with world-class students is not just about caring for ourselves, but also caring for the people around us. And this is what we want to do with this little initiative. So to sum up, it is about doing good for our peers, our university, and our society. And before I end off, I just give my, some of my personal thoughts beyond what I've presented. <coughs> I think the past six weeks have been especially grueling. 
I'm really fortunate to have been working alongside very supportive and really the past six weeks have have let me see the real side of humanity. And it was through this experience, it was through running these elections that I have really understand and saw what true friendships and camaraderie is all about. And I'm really grateful for the people who stood by, who stood by me during this roller coaster ride. It has not been an easy time. I'm, I'm glad to have these long-time comrades who stood by me and I really appreciate you all for that. Thank you. So I think uh, to explain and clarify further, the uh, whole concept and idea of Change NUS Challenge is in the format of competition. So as per any other competition, you know, you need to have some prizes to incentivize people to, you know, to go through the kind of thinking, the thought process that generate you know, good quality solutions. So it is a fundamentally very different thing from volunteering uh, as a NUSU volunteer or as an office holder in our NUSU communities or, or our constituent clubs. So I, I think it's, it's a very different thing. We will clearly state out that it is a challenge, it is a competition, These are, there are guidelines, there are people, there, it will be strictly you know, uh, guidelines to follow. So we will we'll divide and make sure there's a very clear line that it is not you know, um, thing that all volunteers in NUSU can expect or contributing their you know, solutions and all that. This one, the objective is to reach out to people who are able to provide that sort of solutions, who are currently passive, who are not actively um, doing things. If we are able to convert this unconverted group of people, then I think we have, we have you know, achieved some results in that sense. But, uh, how uh, just, that your just uh, I mentioned about my own personal opinion, I feel that there are other ways to incentivize a competition other than just casual. Once you bring the monetary rewards, things can change. That's my own personal opinion. Sure, would you, I mean, would, I mean the, the specific details could be worked out. If you are keen, you can join me and work on this. Finances uh, restrain uh, clubs' ability to to perform. I think really, like I said earlier, is about 
doing and putting up their best performance that the faculty or participating body can do. The basic expectation is that we are doing our best. And so long as we have done that, I think we are comfortable with that. I hope that answers your question. I understand that there could be, you know, people saying uh, the disparity in spending and all that, but different faculty have different sizes. You know, the, the money that they have also differs. But so long as we stay true to our fundamental beliefs that we have done our best, generated the best ideas and concept for red and flag as a participating body, I think um, that that is what we hope to see. This is on another issue, which is red and flag. While well, I applaud your decision to bring out, bring it, bring red and flag out. Wait, Joseph and the. While, while I will be expecting a great show for the first red since 2011 outside the US, and let's not take it away from take take it away from the efforts of the, of the volunteers who have volunteered to spend their own holidays. We have to note that this is this is happening in a backdrop of lack of interest among some participating, participating bodies as embodied by falling collections. It's like, while we can enjoy the floats, the, the falling number of donations of collections over the years has made it a bit worrying that interest could not be sustained even among freshmen whom we are aiming for and seniors who are obviously not very happy, who are obviously not very happy about such an event. So, any, any opinions or solutions regarding new initiatives for Red and Flag? Things you can work on for from this year? Uh, I think Red and Flag needs to move ahead with times. And I think it's not about the scale, but really the spirit of Red and Flag that needs to be preserved. Moving Red and Flag out I think it's about showing what NUS is all about. One good initiative in Rack and Flag this year was the combined mass performance at the start. I think that is one good thing. When we go out to the public, it is not just showing our individual participating bodies as clubs or halls, uh, JCRCs. It is showing that we are one NUS and we could collectively do something more elaborate than just a mass dance, but maybe a collective float or something that everyone chips in together. And I think that is one key area of improvement that we can do. And this goes in line with, with what we want to do, a closer union, everyone gets involved, and let's do the thing together. Yes. So as an extension, how would you ex address the issue of falling amount of collections for, for flag? I think we, we can't just look at flag donations just by the sum itself. There are a lot of ways to get donations. In fact, we could expand rack and flag to involve like a, like a carnival kind of thing. There could be a lot of fringe activities that goes on where we could also collect money, which is why earlier I shared in, in the slide for a network union where CSC, CAC could also be involved. So it's not just involving our, particip our existing participating bodies in rack and flag. The total sum that we collect as NUS, we could also have other people chipping in, or even ad hoc groups, student groups who want to do something, to open up these opportunities. And that will definitely augment the total pool of collection. I don't think we want to look at the collection just in terms of different faculties, because uh, that, that shouldn't be the way, but I think we should look at it holistically. I uh, hope that answers your question. Yes, and I'll be open to discussing it with you. Sure, I'll be glad to. Let's have tea. <laughs> Uh, before I carry on, and then just to speed up the whole process, please keep your question um, straight to the point and simple and short. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, this is from PA. So my question for Ita is, uh, since you were the Vice President last year, what do you think was one positive thing that you stood last year, and what do you think has been done better, and how will you improve on that? Uh, I think one positive thing that we did was, uh, from my personal experience, was really bringing the whole NUSU Council closer together. Never have we before seen such an active council, such as the 34th, very 
vocal and active council members because we have bonded them so well that they are so comfortable with each other. So that is, I think, one huge achievement that did not go cheap. It takes a lot of socializing and, uh, and also a lot of informal uh, bonding activities. But that translated into results. There were active deliberations during council meetings. There were a lot of good ideas and motions that were surfaced from the ground. We started questioning ourselves, the role of Into Expo, people questioned the role of Into Expo, etc. So that was, I think, one positive outcome. And, and I think that shows that Musu is beyond just the Expo, and really it is a larger entity. One thing that could have been done better is I'll also use the same example, because, because of the increased deliberations and debate, uh, I think at the, probably the C-tube level, I think we sense certain divergence in, 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 into little, uh, I'll say, cliques and uh, people with different ideologies. So I think what we could have done better is to, to reintegrate everyone uh, closer together. Uh, you know, council meetings and debates are meant for policy discussions, but I think we could do more to harmonize everyone together. So I hope that answers your question. First, when we look at the Opportunities Fund, it is a, really an external source of funding where it comes from NYC. I also want to look at other organizations like the Central Development Councils. We have five districts. Uh, we'll see which one wants to set up another separate uh, you know, pool of money that, that can help augment our resources. That is meant to start up grown up initiatives, that is meant to start up new projects uh, for NUS. So, new ideas, new initiatives can come from this opportunities fund that is beyond the union kind of process. Of course, we'll streamline all the bureaucracy because we believe in having little red tape. So that is one thing in itself. Of course, the key sessions and um, things like the change, NUS challenge that we propose, we hope to seek funding from, from OE offices to come in uh, to sort of sponsor these prizes because eventually they will be the utmost ultimate beneficiary instead of going out to a professional consultant to get, you know, ideas for uh, like optimizing the shuttle bus frequency and things like that. So whereas the union key sessions, I think that has to come from our own budget. And I think NUSU has to, that will definitely take a dent on our own budget. So we have to reallocate certain resources to, to, to meet that need. And I think it's important to build relations. It's important to engage our own people. And I believe it is a worthy investment for the future. Of course, when we talk about growing a pie, we are not just looking at sources of external funding, but we also uh, could be reviving the NUSU enterprise, which is a possible arm of the uh, revenue generating arm of the union. So I think that one, I met up with the former NUSU presidents. Uh, they have certain ideas of how things could be done if we are able to uh, you know, come to a consensus because they are the board of directors. We, we could do something about it, and that hopefully, instead of a loss-making venture, could generate new revenues and uh, contribute to the overall um, union's uh, operating expenditure. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, so I'm from PA. Just like to ask, uh, you mentioned about uh, you know, grooming uh, leadership succession and all. So how do you intend to like say groom your successor or how have you groomed your successor for VP for example in this case? Of course I think as most of you might know, Sherman Ong is running as my running mate for vice president. He's a year four, like myself. After we go, there will be no one uh, exactly you know, there's no anointed successor. <coughs> Whereas really it's a year two who is running for VP. They both have uh, their merits. But what I believe is is that the union leadership should not be appointed. I don't think I need to openly groom and nurture a successor. I think that is unfair, right? It's just like Lee Kuan Yew, he did not exactly groom a successor. <laughs> <laughs> His choice was Tony Tan, but Go Chok Tong became Prime Minister. 
So it is about growing a wide pool of people with the kind of capabilities, background, and, and knowledge who are able to work together, complement each other, and can step up into leadership together. And within themselves, they choose among themselves. I think that is the right way to do it. Laura Kai did not appoint me as his successor. So I, I think it's a fair thing to do. People, we, we are open to different people stepping up to take on that leadership. But he or she must be able to convince his or her peers to support their particular vision and the things that he or she wants to do. I hope that answers your question. I'll clarify, perhaps then I should phrase my question as then how would you hand over this position uh, as VP to whoever becomes the next president? Like, do you have an idea in mind? Because it's very hard for a new candidate who just won the election to exactly know the job scope and everything. So when you talk about leadership succession, I would suppose that you also talk about, let's say you become president, you step down subsequently, how do you intend on handing down this responsibility to your successors then, whoever that is popularly elected? Uh, I think right now, if we look at the current pool of people, the current state that is running for the constitutional positions, there are a couple of year twos, uh, year threes who have a longer lifespan within the union. And the idea is to expose them to as varied kind of job scopes as possible, be it in the financial cell or be it in, 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 as, um, in the communication cells like the news. Uh, the idea is to, so that they have some depth in, term of, in terms of managing a particular cell, yet at the same time be exposed to larger policy kind of issues. Um, hopefully that will prepare them well to as they work together, they will prepare them well with the necessary background and knowledge to take on the union leadership. Having said that, I don't think that we must restrict the uh, leadership of the, the, the future leadership to just within uh, the pool within EXCO. Because I myself come from a constituent club. It was Mr. Amritian who persuaded me to come over to EXCO. So people like um, John, who has also been very active they are German, they have been active at, at different places. So there are different road maps. There's no defined path for succession. But what we want to do is to have a big pool of people who are able to, to step up. The greatest concern is that you can plan for somebody. And then there's a risk of that person not wanting to take up the job. So there's always that risk. He or she might go on SCP or pick on other duties and, and forsake all the grooming that has been spent, the time and effort invested in a person. So I, I, I think it is not fair to vaccinate a successor, but really build a whole team, groom a whole pool of people that the union can draw its leadership from. Fund. 
It directly addresses <coughs> student needs. It caters, it is wide ranging, it caters to uh, all sorts of students who have diverse interests and diverse goals. And along the process, if they benefit from <coughs> youth development in terms of picking up a new skill, say for example a sports club might want to organize a shooting competition for someone who's totally fresh, who has not shot a gun before, then I think you know that exposure is is a valuable experience. So I think these are things that we could fund uh, in, with, with this opportunity fund. Yeah. Uh, really, business, just an extension to Chelsea's question uh, in regards to opportunity fund. So there exists in Musu only for the council fund. And what do you see are the similarities or differences or like there any things on that? Yeah, I think um, right now the, the council finance is planning community. I think previously in the 34th, nine projects were funded. Uh, I think it's a bit strict, we could find more things. Um, there are a lot of good events, I think like the intercollegiate uh, like competition between uh, our three Utah residential colleges. I think there are a lot more of such events that could be funded. But because the NUSUS pool is that small, because it's drawn out from the, the pool of subscription fees that students pay. So they have to have only that, that small pool of money they set aside for council funding. Whereas opportunities fund by drawing out from external funding, uh, external sources, that you know it's, it's, it's a sort of like a separate account. So I would say the depth and the ability to fund more projects is one. The more types of projects could be funded, not just you, you don't really have to adjust um, you know the direct um, aims of the uh, the council funding, but basically more and more um, diverse and wide range of projects could be funded, the scale and intensity. First, I always believe that as an organization, we need to trust our volunteers. We have stepped forward to serve. We must believe in each and every one of them. For people with holding important appointments, especially managing finances, I think it's important that the right people step up to the job. Preferably, these are people who have prior experiences, who have um, who have done financial financial kind of matters before and hopefully they have um, the support and you know of the, the, the sort of outgoing or incumbent group of people. That person should technically be sort of like well assessed to be able to take on that kind of role. So I think we can't exactly um, sort of like prevent uh, such a thing from happening totally. My fundamental message is that I want to trust our volunteers whatever they do, right? If anything happens, uh, you know, we first, we need, what we can do is to bring in terms of SOT. These are the accounts that you're holding. You are the one signing off. You are liable if anything happens. So in terms of personal responsibility, the one, the person holding the office has to bear responsibility. So if $300 is under your name, then if it's gone and, you know, misspent, that the $300, you have to be accountable for it. Because everything is, is being signed off by the treasurer and the president, someone is going to be accountable for it. So it's, this liability thing is one of the uh, key mitigation against abuse. And I believe it has worked well. But our fundamental thing is we need to trust our own people. And so far, I think, generally, the track record has been good. Uh, so we spoken about the budget. access to these uh, quality programs at uh, NUS. Because, as you know, for instance, uh, UTRP, it's not cheap to stay there. Uh, yeah, and we have to think like new plans about this. So uh, uh, this is just one example. So raising, raising this example, I'm wondering how the union foresees itself uh, taking this role of advocating for students' uh, fees. Yeah, it can be school fees, it can be discount, access to special programs kind of fees. I think 
First, one thing we must acknowledge is that the NUS administration has done a good job in providing a lot of grants and, and uh, bursaries as well as, as awards for students to pursue all these special programs and opportunities. This has been reiterated, reiterated by Provost uh, Tanning Chai for many times. What we need to do as NUSU is really to publicize all these available grants. Again, it boils down to the problem of information asymmetry. There are all these good things out there, right? It's about whether you ask and whether people know. So NUSU needs to amplify the existence of all these grants and all these awards bursaries so that more students can benefit from them. So what we want to do is actively publicize to our platforms like the UNMT sessions that we organize. We'll also broadcast all these good things that are available, good opportunities, come grab them, come seize them. This is what we'll do for...
Yes, I believe that there should be opportunities crafted out for students, and yes, there would be. The other aspects of the union are still equally important. I mean, play student life, the financial aspect. What I'm saying is that we need to be these three R's to the students. One has to make an effort to really listen to them, their real concerns, and realign the union. We do not just want to be status quo. We want to value add to the students' life. In my previous role in the union, I've learned one thing, the art of listening. I envision a union that sincerely cares, a union that exists for a purpose, and a union that is for the students. Aonusu, this is where we'll be heading towards this year if I'm elected. To support my vision of, the, of Aonusu, I have five pillars. First and foremost, sorry about the need to. First and foremost, strengthening the union, following which, sustaining the union, the general welfare of the union, students' interests, and last but not the least, a very important and crucial factor, communications. So before I go into each of the five pillars, let me share my organizational structure with you of the NUSU Exco and how we will value add to the, to the council. NUSU Exco is made up of five cells, the first one being the presidential cell. The key aspects of student vibrancy will derive from this cell, FOCC events and other NUSU fronted events such as Open Day and SLC. What about the foreign students, you may ask? On campus, we have a dedicated committee under this cell to oversee and take care of these people. IRC, the International Relations Committee, events to assimilate international students and events to actually display the colour and the variety of NUS students. Now, something a little more serious, but slightly closer to our hearts. Alumni relations. Why do I raise alumni relations? I see great potential in this field. I've been a director of alumni relations um, two years ago, and I understand the resources and the tools that the Office of Alumni Relations has to support the broader scheme of things. Networking sessions, forums, and the tapping on the resources and facilities as well as the expertise of OER to be organized, and to constantly keep organizing events uh, that will relate to our current undergraduates. Homecoming and alumni related events can be organized to bring our students closer to those who have been there and done that. Other ad hoc events to spine out student life and environment will be the combined concert event uh, which was started this year, uh, last year, the last academic year, where we see uh, Love NUS, one of the flagship events overseen by this cell. And idea we're working on what the 34th actually initially proposed, which is a student life video. Hopefully we can come up with something to actually tie the council together. So uh, in this cell, we have NBAC and IRC. Next. A cell that is very close to my heart and very dear to me, the welfare cell. There are four overarching aspects of welfare cell. Academic welfare, food, wellness, transport infrastructure, tangible welfare, and as well as the welfare network to increase the outreach intensity and to enhance the grassroots effects. So let me go into that to explain. No, let me explain certain uh, a few key points here. Academic welfare. We are involved in a course review committee. No students have been complaining about course review, and this is what we have been doing, and we'll continue to do and update the provost office. We give our views on the board of undergraduate studies, like what Rohan had mentioned earlier, where we just sit and discuss the devices of undergraduate education and uh, raise issues with them to really be the mouthpiece of our students. Another aspect will be the educational and the academical landscape at NUS. Are we becoming too competitive for our group? These are the things that we actually discuss with the the chairperson of the board. Next, food and wellness. We sit on different committees uh, to ensure the prices, the varieties, and the quality of food is looked into and safeguarded. Transport on campus. This is probably one of the biggest issues uh, we have actually seen. To be always on the ground and to constantly work with the office to alleviate issues. You know, we can't solve the issue of IFB. IFB is, uh, is something that, that will always, the problem that IFB actually uh, show is, is that there is no one perfect solution for this. And this affects students on a day-to-day -day basis. Under this um, student well, uh, under the welfare cell, we have the Students Fund, in terms of diversing the BABG, the book awards, uh, the bursary awards and book grants, as well as most of welfare. Next, the secretariat cell. The secretariat cell, which will be further covered by, I'm sure, both ASAP nominees. But at the end of the day, the sex cell oversees many of our assets and facilities. I envision one day in the near future for YIH, I mean that was the very intent of YIH in the very beginning, to be the student's hub. The key idea of this cell, the key idea of this cell is to integrate resources for higher value, the van, our logistics, um, and the push cards in fact. How do we pull our resources together 
such as clubs and students who want to rely on us are able to better know what we have and, they, and that what they can actually tap on. Other aspects would include the administrative issues and services provided by four NUS students um, by the committee, Nusu Committee. For the finance cell, there are four key ideas, ideas that will be further covered by the BITEC nominee. Self-sustainability, how can we work, keep working on enterprise and not completely eliminate this channel? Why do I say this? Because the moment we eliminate this channel, that's when we say goodbye to self-sustainability. Other avenues would be a team of people to go out and look for sources of sponsorships and many others. Next, prudence. How do we allocate our resources well and how to allocate it efficiently, effectively and to spend our money wisely? You know money is a very sensitive issue, which is why it is the onus of this cell to actually look and ensure that money is spent wisely. We aim to be transparent and accountable, especially in terms of our spending and budgeting. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, students still are the ones that are paying us the subscription fee. It's only right for us to actually be accountable to them. Lastly, opportunities. We're looking to expand the thing called council funding such that more students will be able to be empowered to organize events for the NUS communities, such that not only student leaders have the opportunity to organize, but any willing and able student can step up and take up this chance. Last, Nusubi's comm is under um, the finance cell. Last but certainly not the least, the communication cell. Runkai mentioned the Louder Nusu last year. What he envisioned was that a union, for the union's presence to be all over campus, not just in terms of billboards and, and posters, but also in terms of how we represent these people. Um, there, were, there was a concerted effort by the Comcell this year to boost this aspect of the union, and Cell will continue to work on this and build on the efforts laid down by the 34 exco. This Cell will be mainly focused on publications and publicity, how students and our stakeholders view the union. In fact, they are the windows to the union. The Cell will continue to explore our channel outreach, be Facebook, website, or even the feedback email, <coughs> and look at ways we can better disseminate information share communication platforms, and to bridge the gap between the council, the exco, as well as the students, and the general student population. I feel that the image, the branding, and the perception of the union hinges greatly on this cell. Maybe not the only, uh, it hinges not only on this cell, but it hinges greatly on this cell. This cell is the face of the union, and to the rest of the students. Under this cell, we have PRU, the, the Media Design Wing, the Rich, and BBC. So you see, the interdependency of the five cells, the exco serves a function of the union and, and the council. And for me, however in my opinion, however in my opinion, there is an aspect of the union that has the potential to grow, that has the potential to expand, and thus, from my term onwards, hopefully, if I'm elected, there will be a new cell within the union, the exco, the relation cell. So what is the relation cell? We need another focus to reach out to the students to be relevant relatable and reliable to them. To be relevant with times, to be relevant with times, we need to become a union that reaches out and listens to the voices of students to be a consultative union. Relations have been parked under the communication cell for the past um, two exco terms. And given the job scope, the nature of the job scope of the communication secretary, he or she just simply cannot um, pump in any more resources to take care of this aspect. It was almost like a forgotten wing, in my opinion, this aspect should grow and therefore be a cell, an avenue, a space where the intangible aspect of the union can flourish and thus the creation of the cell. The key features of this cell would be on internal relations, reaching out to our student leaders, listening to issues that we know and worry each club. And we all know that the worries for each club is vastly different be it, um, from CSC or in comparison to BZ club. So to be able to work on, with the welfare cell as well as the MCs of each management committee to reach out to the people. This cell will also be the point of contact of the union given the nature of the general secretary, which will also be the cell team. And this cell will flourish as an information collector to give this data, uh, this data to the communication cell to be translated to the general students within the union. And we all, um, PIU has um, reformed itself and there's and internal relations with that will be working very closely with the cell. So these are this is the, the six cells that we that we and the cell heads as you can see the presidential cell we have the vice president, secretary cell, assistant secretary, the welfare cell, student welfare secretary, finance cell, home cell, as well as the relation cell. 
So these are the six cells and the respective cell head achieving different functions of the EXCO and by extension, the union. So after listening and understanding the layout of the organization, let me bring you back to the five pillars that I mentioned earlier to support my vision of our new schools. The first pillar, strengthening the union. There are four key stakeholders of the union. The EXCO, the NUSU committees, the CON Club, and last but not the least, in recent times, the associate bodies, which includes the RCs um, and the halls of residences. The main idea is to bring these four bodies closer to the core centre. The main idea is to actually look at how we can actually engage these four people, to make them feel a sense of belonging. So what do we have now? First, we have the, the CQ, um, a think tank, to discuss high-level issues, to discuss issues that are relevant to the student before trickling it down to the council for voting or to the rest of the student body. Currently, the six halls sit on this thing called the Council of Halls and Residences, uh, discussing issues that are pertaining to student life in the halls. Uh, and this increases and actually enhances the student privacy aspect in that uh, area of the school. To complement this this year, we will start this thing called the College Student Life Committee, involving the U-Town Colleges. They have their concerns, which are different from the faculty club or the non-faculty clubs. Um, there needs to be an avenue, a sharing, perhaps even a collaboration for, for, uh, for this to discuss student life aspects um, within the u -Town Colleges. Next, also committees. I'll create, uh, there'll be a creation of this thing called the Committees Network to not only ensure that the committees grow um, vertically on its own to strengthen, but also to grow horizontally, to see the Uso committees as an entity, as a, as a strong unit, to tie these committees together and to strengthen the Uso committees on the whole. So if you look at the screen, you can see that we are actually cementing each node that is central and critical to the union, to bond and to connect. I see this as an avenue for interaction, an avenue for continued growth. Next, to increase the council engagement, to not only discuss relevant and high-level issues such as the ACAD issues or issues like REC or very important issues like school fees. As, the, as council members, we all need to be wearing two, two hats to identify and to know when to change hats, especially when we're making our decisions or casting our votes. To ideally know when to change that, that's the art of it. While we are very keen on representing the interests of our faculty club or our constituent clubs, is to know when, when to switch on the student's cap. There, like what Rekha mentioned just now, there will never be a situation that is beneficial for the general student's population, but detrimental for a particular faculty. Next is to leverage on the council, to share our resources, to share not necessarily just logistics and assets, but also best practices, expertise, and even ideas. For example, I'm, I'm aware that NG started this house system, which was adapted in France. So, our volunteers play a major role. We not only want to recognize these people, but think of ways to attract and even retain them. And this I will go into a bit later in the presentation. It's not just about, it's not, it, the volunteer work that these people do is not just about the job. It's about the process and about the experiential thing that they actually step in, where they actually expect when they step into the union. We hope to have the volunteers network that we can tap on in the near future to create a family within the council, within the union. We need also to strengthen ties between the officers, the alumnus, as well as our students. We would want the presence of NUSU to be everywhere on campus as what uh, was, was put, off, put forth by the 34th Council. Not just by posters and banners, but also the role of the associate bodies and the constituent club. For example, if a computing student gets to turn and, and turns to the computing club when they have issues, NUSU has done our job because the computing club is the NUSU to the computing student. What is a union that doesn't promote student privacy? Events will be supported, FOCC, FOP, as well as the IFG. We want, we want to be a union that constantly promotes student privacy around campus. Next, to sustain the union. But let me first talk about the financial aspect, which I have shared a bit last year, and I will briefly touch on it. The enterprise stream, the t-shirt sales to not only be just a branding tool, but also a small income avenue. While we all know that the income received is uh, rather marginal, but we should not totally eliminate this wing, as I mentioned earlier. The day we eliminate this wing is the day we give up on our walk towards self-sustainability. Sponsors and partners, as mentioned a little earlier as well, will be sourcing, will be, will be on here in a bid to become self-sustainable and also to further empower students, opportunities for these students, impact other students 
on a continuous basis and to continuously increase this exposure. A quantifiable increase in participation at union events and also at co-op events. We do want to see the same faces every now and then. Lastly, but certainly not least, to eventually become relevant, relatable and reliable union. Our union, our position, our events and our position as the union to be a leading example to other universities. We don't only want to copy the methods of other universities to be the Harvard of Asia, but we want to be the anywhere of Europe. We want at least for our union to be an example for others to follow. Let's dream big and think far ahead. To summarize, these are the key 35 new initiatives that I'm intending to implement. The project YIH to start the groundworks to make YIH a hub for students. The project outreach, uh, where we actually reach out to these students, engage them in focus group discussions, as well as informal sessions. The Exco Midterm Review, a document we posted to the school. We want to be accountable to our electorates so that these people who have voted us in um, have a clear idea of what we've been doing. Relation cell, and I think a lot has been said about this in my, uh, in my speech, a whole new focal point while still keeping in depth the other parts of the union of the Exco. So after bringing you through the macro and micro views um, of my plans and my vision, let's now revisit the tagline that I so firmly believe this year, our new tool. It is only when we create this sense of belonging that we become relevant. It's only when we become relevant that students will be able to relate to us and eventually rely on us. This intangible aspect, if sustained properly, will reap and harvest tangible results for the union and by extension to NUS. People, let me just uh, run through some of my motivations for running. Pardon me for referring to my script, I just want to miss out key important points. I cannot imagine a period of time where I can actually say in my university life that I can say that you know I can live without doing anything for the Exco or for the student body per se. Many students are motivated by what they can give back to the union. I was asked once what was my motivation and I gave a few points. I believe that we can go far and do more as a union together. I believe that I can shift the ideology within the union. I believe fully in the whole four students, five students notion. These are very typical answers you may say. And then I say on top of all these, I have no idea why I was so attached to this union. To the extent I feel empty when I don't have anything to do at Expo level. From interest, it became a dedication. From dedication, it became a passion. From passion, it became a part of me. It didn't take me very long to decide and realize that this organized, what this organization meant to me. I thought of everything I did at Expo level, at union level, and I know in my heart that I wanted to give nothing but my best. Whatever role I was in, like for example, last year when I was when I lost president, uh, I actually I ran for office and I gave 100 percent because I believe in the value of the students' union. I know that maybe running for presidency last year was the right thing to do, perhaps at the wrong time. Maybe it's for a preparation for what's in store for me. So I started my term as welfare sec to achieve my goals. But as soon as I began what I had to do, working at the committees I had. I fell in love with what I was doing. Student welfare became a part of me. And extrapolate, and extrapolating, extrapolating that experience, I still believe in this organization. I believe that we will go very far as a union. Yes, we want to create opportunities for individuals to grow and excel. But the question is, how are we going to do that? There needs to be a plan, both short term and long term. We need to be realistic. What good will our plans be internal issues and relations within the union is not strong? due to one reason or another, what good will our plans be if we cannot even see beyond ourselves and even our faculties? What good will it be if our own students, oh no wait, our own student leaders and volunteers cannot even identify with the union and our ideas? Let's not skip this step. This is a very crucial step. Thus my motivation is to ensure that with whatever experience I have in the Exco and in NUSU on the whole, to guide the organization together with the council the Exco, so that students will not only be able to know what we are doing for them, but also to bridge the gap and be the voice for them. We know we cannot please everybody. I mean, when Kai started the student session, we started the focus group discussion in the previous term. Students do want a voice. We can be their voice. We need to connect with these students. We need to actually engage these students and to know fully well what we are fighting for and more importantly, who we are fighting for. One big goal in the midst of this identity crisis NUSU is going through right now is to not only increase the presence of NUSU throughout the campus, but it's also to grow inwardly. I believe in not just being part of the change. 
I believe that I can spearhead this change and together with the whole council. So with that.